if you care about your badminton journey, I'm 100% sure that you will want to know the pitfalls that you might feel or you might see in the journey that you are stepping along. The last thing you really want is after working so hard for so many years, suddenly you fall into a pitfall and never be able to come back. So today, I will share with you the pitfalls that I have seen and observed throughout the 10 years journey of me bringing along my son, Kim Lin, in his badminton journey. Welcome to KJ Badminton. Today, the, the topic is flight to the top. Still clear of pitfalls in your badminton journey. What is that really about? Experience and observation along to see how a player has been successful or not successful or failed in the middle of their journey will be recorded in eight different categories of pitfalls that I want to share with you today. So the target audience is really for those people that really, really want to improve your badminton skill and become a serious badminton player. And hopefully one day you will be able to conquer a long in, not just a school, but eventually your district, your country, your state, and up to the region and world one day, hopefully. I really, really wish you well in the journey along there. So let's learn some of the pitfalls so you yourself do not fall into it. Let's get into it. I have prepared a deck. It's only very few slides, seven to eight slides, but I've divided it into two different sections so you would see a part one of two this round and eventually part two of two will come a week later. Number one pitfall. The first pitfall itself, I would want to really start with during the early childhood. The, it's all up to the parents, especially during the early childhood because the kids is as young as five, six, seven years old. They really have no idea on what they're doing. It's all on the parents on how do they plan and improve the badminton training for the kid. Started with wrong coach and wasted golden time. It's really a lesson that I myself learned with them because of the convenience that I like, the convenience where there is a badminton training center very near to my home. Uh, generally speaking, 15 minutes driving. And the best part is I just drop him off and I will go off to do my very own things. One and a half, two hours later, I'll come back. He's all sweaty. We'll just took out his towel and start wiping off. Then we get into the car and, hey, thank you very much. See you next week. That's what we have gone through for easily three, if not four years. So that itself, in my opinion, it's the biggest, biggest mistake I've made. And I wish that you will not do the same. Simply because during that period of time, in that very young age, not only will you need to develop their interest in a sport, but also at the same time, it is the golden learning time for them to really learn the most basic muscle memory along the sport. So if we were to waste that section of the golden time, it is not good, right? It is actually a period that they will have to catch back because someone else would have done it right and gotten a coach that's right for them. And eventually they have just grown so fast along that sports are you can, you can really see at that point of time hey the same age group forget about the first two years the third years onward there are certain things that just suddenly go a few steps quicker than him at that time so you would really say huh something is not very right but i did not realize that until three and a half four years later then i started to make aggressive changes so please if there is an uh, urge for the kid to be successful in badminton, start them right and start them on the right coach. There are certain videos that I've made, there are two videos that I've made published, and you can actually search them in my channel on how to look for the right coach. I'll go on to the next point. Parent didn't invest into a good one on one skill coach. Let's just say that I have never known that such a thing called one-to-one -one training. 
in the first two years or three years of training. Eventually, when I got to a point, see that why is this boy or this player that has been able to do certain skill that my son has not been able to? I started to ask questions, started to linger along with the parents around and figure out that they are actually investing in the one-to-one coaching. At the same time, there are other parents that are approaching me to say, do you want to try out this coach? Maybe we can go together. And obviously, um, they would have some friends that, although it's a one-to-one session, but they are attending the same training session. They can discuss about it. They can talk about it. And they can linger about it. So it is making a big difference to them. So I would say, yeah, let's try it. Then eventually, when I get in there, I start to realize that, oh my God, okay, there's so much that we have missed out. And of course, you would want to go with somebody that's notable, that is proven, or better still, has been into an international scene in the past. That itself will make a huge difference as a starting point, as a launching pad for the kid to learn the skill at a young age. Okay, I'll move on <clears throat> to the next point. Ah, overtrain, 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 overtrain. Do not overtrain the kid, especially when he or she is at a younger age. It is very critical to do that simply because if they are at the age of seven, eight, nine, I have seen parents that push them so hard and park them into a 25, 30, 35 hours training per week, get them to jog nonstop running non-stop, that itself is hurting them more than helping them. The real examples, real life examples that I've actually seen really, really cause the muscle tightening and eventually the kid. Yes, they have won a lot of tournaments in their younger age up to a point where it's like, hey, when he walked in, all the kids would be like, oh, you know, the champion is coming in, right? So yeah, that happened. But most of those characters, most of those kids or the most of the players that won in the early age, they would disappear. Yes, I'll say that again. They would disappear one at a time, eventually throughout their teenage age, simply because they couldn't grow well in their teenage age. The puberty process is affected because of the muscle tightening, over tightening. So that itself is a concern. And if you are going through some serious regime with the training of your kid, please reconsider that. In their early age, it's supposed to be enjoyable, enjoyable period. Let them like the sport, let them love the sport, let them play with their friends and eventually get to competitive and serious stage in their teenage age. So do not train, overtrain, do not overtrain a kid that's younger. Now, the fourth point on the pitfall for early childhood conditioning is father's dream. It is very true. It could be certain fathers that are denying it or the fathers would just have to unconsciously pack his very own dream into a player to tell them that, hey, go for it. Go into the state team, go into the school team going to a national team, fight for it, train hard for it, simply because the parent in the past has not been able to do so. It's nothing really wrong about it. Uh, but again, we got to watch if that's what the kids really want to do. Just remember is the kids wants or the player once engaged into the badminton sports and be serious in it. The player better be very, very engaged and loved sport. Or if he's being pushed or cornered in the sport by the parent, it's going to break. It's a matter of time. If it's not today, it's not. It's going to be tomorrow. If it's not tomorrow, it's going to be like two years later. Maybe because he will just call you the day and say, thank you very much, dad or mom. I think I would want to do something else. And that has happened so often based on what I have seen in the badminton eras. So again, it's just a quick reminder. Please watch for that and gauge the interest of the kids consistently. Have a heart-to-heart talk with him or her 
more frequent to understand how are they doing? Are they loving it? Are they hating it? Are they what's the feeling with the sport? So that itself will give you a good gauge or good answers on hey, are we doing it right or not? Still on the early childhood conditioning pitfall, this is a topic that's super controversial. If I were to tell you that, hey, your training to your very own son will not be recommended, you probably come and slap me on my face saying, yeah, what are you talking about? I train really well with the son. Possible. It is very possible, especially in their younger age. I in short, in summary, on this one point itself, I will not recommend a parent to do training to their own son if you're not a professional player in the past. When I say professional player, it, it has to be at, at least national, if not international, or international, if not national level. So that itself is very critical because you must gain respect from the player, him or herself, along the way. In the earlier days, let's just say that 12 years old and younger, that would be no issue because the kid or the player will listen to you 100%. Whatever you say, you do it, everything, it's not a problem. Instruction is followed. But that's also the most critical part of the development because if you miss that window for injecting the right skill set, the right mindset, the right attitude towards the sport, you missed it. There's nothing else to talk about. So, when the kid grow up until like 12, and you are still training them yourself, unless you want to go into military style and start to whip them, start to tell them, if you don't do this, I will punish you, and so on and so forth, you will see very little return in your success. A few reasons behind it. Number one, the kid has their own thought process. They are starting to see the world wider and they are starting to question, that, hey, do you really know this thing? Are, are you really into it? Or, or so on. Like, like I say, unless you are a professional player in the past and you have your success level to be used as a benchmark so that the questions are lesser. But still, if you do not go into military style training, it's going to be really difficult to get things through and eventually the relationship between you and the player will be really spoiled. So, but one point, one positive thing about parent training the kid is it's absolutely okay, perfect. In fact, I would say the best thing to do is to spend additional court time with the player as the revision, knowing that what he or she has been trained in the training, and you go into additional court time with them and um, Pick them shadows and ask them what's the weaknesses that you want to work on. Just do on those things. It will not only help them, they will love it and you will see improvement in it. We should. So that one is perfectly okay. But please do not be the main training of the player. So that is how I summarize and say that if you were to do that, chances of success is extremely low based on the probability that we have observed, we have seen over the past 10 years, it, it is really the case. I have seen a success case, but I say it has to be a military style and it has to be a crazy discipline going in and the relationship is just not the desired type in the era that we're in right now. So again, parents, if you are serious about having your kid being successful in badminton at the same time maintaining the good relationship with them, so that you become friends at one day with them, don't get into this. Let the professional do their job. Let the professional put it through. Okay. So those are the pitfalls of early childhood conditioning. And I will transition it to uh, the next point. Teenagers pride. So we have talked a little bit about the early stage and eventually when they move into their teenage age, they would start to grow and think that hey, things are not, things are actually not as simple as this. Things are actually, um, it's not just the parents, the world, and the world is big, the world is wide. And they are actually uh, seeing, they are actually seeing a lot of 
different varieties, different flavors from uh, their friends, the, the people that they mingle with. And of course, at the same time, the internet, the YouTubers that are telling you, oh my God, I'm also a YouTuber, right? So yeah, <laughs> but again, I, I'm sharing the real experience with you. Um, so they are starting to think, which is a good thing if you ask me, because everybody goes through that. They have to have their own thought process to be an adult in the future. But because of that, they will stop listening to their parents or at least gradually, and the coach, because their thought process is getting stronger, they have their own urge of making their own decision. So that section is un unavoidable, but it is a must step two. Please listen more. Please listen more to YouTubers, like I said earlier, and their friends, and that itself, it's a, a natural growth path of a teenager. So you would definitely observe that coming along. The question is, how do we deal with it? How do we make sure that they do not, they do not drift away from the path that they will want to? And of course, parents need to be our friends to convey the message, which exactly like what I said earlier. It is very, very important. If we know certain things are going to happen, bad things that I'm referring to, we're going to advise our own children. That's perfectly um, normal. Every parent does that. But again, is the message taken in positively or they are saying, ah, you, you are just grumbling again and again. So how, how many are going to take you seriously, right? So that section, it's the critical point of how uh, we would want to convey a message. So number one, obviously, you be a friend to talk to them. But of, of course, you know, at the same time, you can use a different method too, which is going through certain people that they listen to normally the respect level will be higher at least in that field let's say for example in badminton training if you observe certain strokes that he's not returning well he's not doing what you're hoping or the you're not seeing the standard that they in what we can really do is to advise the coach and coach can you help me to pass this message over to this player, tell them that this is not right. The coach will actually think about it. Yeah, you're right. Yes, I definitely can help you to do that. So use or utilize the coach that you have or even other parents that they are paying a lot of respect to uh, to pass the message on. It will create a different effect. Exactly the same word, exactly the same sentence, exactly the same point coming from our very own mouth here. Uh, from the, the father or mother compared to others that they pay more respect to, it's completely different effect. So that itself is what I would want to share with you. So again, to pass the right message with the ultimate intention to help the player has to be done by someone else. Uh, it's much better than you do yourself. So objective based, objective based. You want the player to improve, you want the player to be better. And of course, we need to find the right way to do it. Still at the teenager's pride, let's talk about the respect. There are certain times that they will show lack of respect to others, snobbish, especially when they start winning tournaments. You will see a different person. So it is no one else but the parents' job to tell them to keep themselves humble. If you are not humble and you are thinking that you are a high flyer, you will be able to beat everyone else, you do not pay respect to the training sessions, you are having your own um, high-flying thought process that, hey, you know, I'm the king, that's it. I can tell you right now, you can just wrap up your badminton bag and go home because you are not going to go far. At least one way that I've been learning from other parents too, uh, it's to pack or keep all the trophies that they won, all the certificates that they won, that is my son has won, into a little box, a little um, paper box and cover it, shove it one side and never be able to be seen around the house because you keep hanging them around and like, hey you know 
it's looking good, it's flashy. So he has this thought process that, hey, you know, I'm a winner. I don't need to work hard. I'm already a winner. That feeling, that thought process is going to tarnish their effort or the learning intention in the training. And eventually, we will make them a poor player compared to us. Because others are eager to learn. They are moving so fast and you are slowing down. It's like, hey, I'm good. You know, I'm fine. I'm not worried. So that itself is a real trap. It's what for the pitfall and don't let that happen. Do not respect the coach. I've seen cases where players are just not respecting the coach because in the past, the coach had taught them so much and the coach keep repeating themselves along the training, which is very, very true. And in badminton, hello, we are looking for perfection. A same smash, a same drop, a same chop will have different effects. We do it differently. And the coach is repeating themselves so that we get the perfection. But unfortunately, when the players is having a bigger hit right now, they're like, oh my goodness, they're just saying the same thing again and again. Hello, Mr. Player. Badminton, it's a lot of repetition. It doesn't really matter about badminton alone. Any sport, it's a lot of repetition. And if you are losing respect to your coach, that's the end of the game. My advice to you is, hey, look for another coach. Uh, if you can, if you can't, it's time to pack the bag, right? So because respect is the most important respect. Trust, obviously, to the coach. It's ultimately the engine, the fuel of learning. Okay, so that's very, very important. Social life. Sorry, some bugs here in the slide, but please ignore the bottom line there, bottom row there. Social life uh, in teenage age, it's um, especially when they are falling into a relationship, we call it a puppy love. And that itself is going to bring the players into a self destructive mode because nothing else is important. Nothing else is more critical than that. We all have been through that. You know, we, are, we are old enough to, be, to understand what puppy love is and how does it feel. And that overwhelming, hey, love thought process, love feeling around it will wipe out any other intention, including your schooling, including your sports, everything. It's going to second, third, fourth, or no priority. As the priority is on the relationship. So whenever we are observing such scenario that's happening, please advise the player, tell them the consequences of what is going to happen when a love relationship is starting in the sports life. So that itself, it's going to be very critical. It could be different when you are getting more mature and going to your 20s and so forth. That's perfectly okay because I believe you know what you need to do to be successful. If you are not successful in sport, you're gone. Basically, your life is you know, destroyed and your career is destroyed. So hopefully you understand what you're going to and, and make that relationship real and successful and do not deprioritize your sports training. But you're not, you're putting yourself in the danger. That's absolutely um, not okay. It's a very, very dangerous pitfall. And I've seen it in my own eyes and a player that's doing so well, once getting into a relationship, that's it. It's self-destructed until the parents are getting more, it's getting into so ugly and they have to practically force the relationship to stop and only then the player would return back to at least near normal. But again, why go through all this knowing that it's going to be like that? So prevention is definitely more important. So that's where I'm coming from. Um, then, of course, the second line on the teenage social life is a mixture or mingling with the badminton friends. I think everybody knows that in teenage age, your friends would have more influence than anyone else in your life to you. And, and that itself is very, very critical because 
if you are mingling with your friends that's fighting work, so let's go for champion. Every tournament they go, as you go all out, they will fight and they are seeing some results. Not necessarily every round you have to win, but they are going all out. That's the keyword, going all out without reservation. Rather than you are mixing with a group of friends and eventually you will realize that, hey, you know what? It's okay, let's have fun. Uh, let's go out at night. Um, tomorrow, matches it's late you know that's fine you know we wait we can sleep late and eventually uh we can still make the match time hey hello it's gone it's kamikaze none of those will be successful discipline is also one of the key topics which we will talk about in uh part two of the hit course um video so again if you're seeing that you yourself as a player is mingling with somebody that has no intention to become champion. My advice to you: it's time to move on. If it takes you to move yourself to another camp that sees a lot of champions are being produced, a lot of success is being made in that camp or in that badminton academy. Do it and do it now. If it costs. The environment will change a person's intention from learning eagerness and the urge of success into such a big difference. So do that and do that now. I'll move on to the next um, point. I don't know what's going on with this slide. I think it's, um, but again, I'll, I'll just uh, pick two. So if you cannot, it's, it's more on food intake, the diet. It's very, very important. You have to be able to control your diet in order not to go big or fat. You know, that, that's very critical. Um, very, very important. Simply because I have seen some examples, some players, they have actually grown a little bit too big. Uh, eventually, it was slow in the court and they have to go through a special program to bring the weight down so that you can continue to be competitive. You're big, it's difficult to be competitive. So that itself, you have to be very, very watchful uh, so that you don't overgrow yourself. Do not take break first. It's a big thing. And, and that itself is very critical simply because your body will need to have intake consistently. We are not a digital world. You know, we don't live in digital. We live in a real world where things are analog. If you take some food right now, your body will absorb actually utilize it grow and so on in your teenage age in your player's life age you need that more than any other things so it's very very critical for that to happen and and compared to someone else who doesn't take breakfast your food intake is only happening at uh, a later time your lunch time your dinner time and so on so that itself is going to hurt you simply because others are actually growing while you take a uh, pause in the breakfast time and of course, when you wake up in the morning, your body is super hungry for food and vitamins intake. So that itself is the best time for you to do recovery, to, to do the run, to, to absorb all the food intake that you're taking. So breakfast, it's so important. I just do not understand why certain players are just skipping it. Why? Is there a justification to do that or something that I, I don't have appetite in the morning? Of course you don't because you have not been doing it. Once you start it, maybe you want to start it slow and of course, eventually gradually increase them to a full breakfast, then you will see it different. And once you have the full breakfast, full breakfast, I can assure you, you can't even stop it. You really want to have the intake in the phone. So that itself, it, it's very, very critical. Do not practice do not practice before during and after I, i'm actually saying the slide is having some challenges here but i apologize for that we don't practice uh, a player if they do not practice before during and after the foot intake due for a training or a match time that's gonna be very very um it's very bad for the player Simply because if others are doing it, you're not doing it. I just want you to imagine what's really happening. Before the training, and if it's already three hours that you have taken your meal, you're going to another two and a half, three hours training, do you think you have the energy to perform in that training? If you don't, 
what does it take for you to be in a better shape? You better plan your food intake. Let's say, for example, two hours before, you want to have a full meal, that's fine. One hour before, you want to have something so that you don't get hungry during the clinic. That's perfectly okay. Uh, and, and just that the food portion has to be a portion, proportion to it. And of course, the type of food that you take has to be uh, selective. Let's say, for example, it's more carbo-based or more meat-based. And of course, at the same time, at the same time, do not get into a clinic empty stomach. Or even 30 minutes before, right? It's like, oh man, I am feeling a little hungry. Okay, that's fine. You know, do something very light. Okay, have a piece of bread or uh, something that's really carbo-based and light. It's definitely 10 times better than going into a training with empty stomach. You're going to drain your body so badly that the recovery is going to take forever to come back. During the training, a lot of people are thinking, ah, never mind, never mind, it's okay, you know. Uh, after the training, we bring a lot of um, sports rings uh, in Malaysia, the, the, the more famous sports rings, 100 plus. So we, we do a lot of that. But they don't do it during the training. During the training, it's like, hey, you know, you're defeating so fast. Your body is actually sweating so much. You're using so much of energy. That window is critical. You have to maximize and capitalize on that window. Your body is actually absorbing so much because they're defeating so much. They, they're looking for intake also. But you don't do it. You ask for it because you will just miss that window and say, oh, you know, after the meal, uh, we'll, we'll come back to you. Look at how the top players are having during the badminton match. That itself says a lot. And, and did you see them coming in with nothing? No, they were coming with their sports screen. Of course, they have still have their water to make sure that you know, they can rinse the mouth. Some of it, we actually do power gel. Some of them, we actually uh, do banana. Lee Chong Wei takes a lot of bananas during the game. Uh, go watch it, okay? It's not just me saying it, but it's really happening. And many others are, are taking power bars and so on. One bite. Why? Why do they want to do that? Of course, to replenish energy at one time. And of course, to make sure that the recovery, it's going to be a lot quicker uh, at, at that point of time once they're done with it. Right. So it's very, very important to make sure that during the sports time, take the sports drink. At least that's the minimal. Uh, and and if the, the easiest is go buy some brands of sports drinks in powder form and mix them into your real, little container and shake them and, and just bring it along. One big sip into it, then followed by water if you want to. Right? So, but if not, just continue to take the sports drink. Utilize that first, then only come to your water if you can. But again, you know, it's the window. It's the window. That you but what about after? After it's the time that your body is so tired. You're so tired and they are asking for help. The body is like, hey, look, you have used me up for so much. What are you going to do to me? I'm like super hungry. And, and there's a window. There's a window of 30 minutes in there where the body will actually absorb so hungrily on whatever you put in. So put in something good. And I would strongly recommend protein uh, drinks just with protein powder. And actually, usually you come with a shaker and you just pick that at that point of time. Immediately, you put down your racket on into your back, and the next thing that you do is to shake your protein drink, ideally, because there are a lot of signs behind it. You say that the ability, ability to absorb those protein drinks to actually immediately drop after um, 30 minutes, right? Even in that 30 minutes, it makes a difference is it before or after. But again, you know, so long as you're doing that 30 minutes, you're fine, you're gonna be okay, and you can do it along, you take taking protein drinks and you can still do it warm down. It's perfectly okay. Why do you want to wait? It's already science proven. And why do you still want to take the chance saying that, oh, I, I don't like that routine you know, I don't feel like taking anything after it. That's your problem. Go fix your problem if you care about your badminton game. That's on. Uh, and of course, um, Last but not least is actually the unbalanced diet. I apologize if the slide is not here. Um, my friend said, unbalanced diet, it's really on the vegetable intake. So the, the, unhealthy food and unbalanced diet. Unhealthy food, it's absolutely, 
common sense, I would say, but common sense is not very common, uh, especially in the teenagers' uh, age. It's very, very important for us to recognize that fast food is not good. It's so oily, it's so um, high cholesterol, and eventually it will still lead you to a lower immune system. And that itself, it's, it's a big thing. Uh, same goes to the unbalanced diet. Unbalanced diet as of you don't take much of the Bible or veggie uh, to help your body to become a, a balanced and build up the immune system. When you have low immune system, whenever ad hoc situation you're going through, you can drink water for like half a day or a whole day, um, then the body will get really weakened. Your immune system is not able to sustain it or whenever you get certain uh, disease from your, the people that mingle with, that if you are strong enough, hey, you can actually do all, do all those challenges. And if you're just not strong enough, there you go. Your body will get you give way. And at the end of the day, you yourself is going to fall sick. You will not be able to train. And someone else or everyone else will be able to continue to do training. And that itself, it's, uh, it's not good for you as a player. So be cautious of continuously upkeep your body condition by having the healthy food, by having the balanced diet. So those are the few points that we want to share with you today. And I hope that uh, it makes some sense. They are part two of this video and it's coming up next week. I'm still cleaning up the notes right now and um, we'll, be doing, we'll be doing live uh, next week. So especially pay attention to the final, final point in the in the part two because it's going to be a visit sorry the acid test it's a real acid test for players if you fail all that three tests chances for you to go far it's much slimmer. so again thank you for spending time with me and i hope that uh, this um, video is going to be helpful look forward to the part two have a good day thank you and don't forget the more that we share the more that we give